Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Today we have fuel issues and we've had fuel issues on the farm. If you follow along the farm vlog here, we've had issues with one tractor clogging fuel filters. We've had issues with another tractor clogging fuel filters. We've had issues with this tank clogging fuel filters. I've got some bad fuel from somewhere at some point and I've got to solve this problem. So today we're going to crack into the fuel pump here. We're going to talk a little bit about it and I'm going to try and put a fuel water separator on here and we've got to disassemble the pump and see if we can get it to work right because now it only runs for a minute and then it shuts off so we'll show you all that stuff we'll have a little bit of fun and hopefully have a repair all right Woo! i ain't afraid of work i ain't afraid to play i ain't afraid to get the job done to do it my own damn way i ain't afraid of life times like this if you mess with my freedom i'll tell you just what you can kiss that's right. First things first, I'm gonna put some rubber gloves on because my wife is not a huge fan of that diesel fuel perfume that I like to wear so much. So we're gonna get in here and work on this. This is a brand new fuel filter right here and I have the old fuel filter right here in the back of the truck. And as you can see, that is the wrong color. That is rust inside the fuel filter. And this is a water block fuel filter right here because I suspected I had a water issue inside this fuel tank. Now we picked up this toolbox fuel tank combo for a hundred bucks used and we've had problems with it after about six months of using it. I've already ran about 800 gallons of fuel through this and it had no troubles whatsoever except at first we clogged up a filter, we put a new filter on and that was it. Now I've got bad fuel from a bad fuel source and that's causing problems with my tractors and causing problems with this fuel pump. So I'll show you what's going on here and how it all works. So I never hardwired this into the pickup truck. I have a little clip system right here and it's pretty simple. Just have some alligator clips and I just clip to the hot side on the battery and to the ground over here to a ground source on the chassis of the truck. And that worked just fine. It's always worked just fine until now let me show you what's happening over here on the pump all right so we've got some diesel cans over here and we'll be pumping into those diesel cans and there'll be a bucket right down here so if you see me squirt fuel down it's not going on the ground it's going in the bucket and we may be using that fuel to clean up some of the parts that we pull off of this pump system right here i'll show you what it's doing this is the way we typically do it i've already replaced this nozzle system right here and we had a clog in this line believe it or not not too long ago that's pretty rare to have a clog in that type of line so typically i'll turn this little switch on right here and the pump is supposed to come on well it's not coming on so what i've been doing is i'll turn it off and i'll take a wrench or something a hammer or whatever i'll give it a little tappy tap and then <laughs> it still didn't come on sometimes it comes on sometimes it doesn't it's got a gremlin in it man Hear that? Oh, sounds horrible. And I'll pump for just a minute. You hear that? That's where water got into the pump. Yeah, bad sound right there. That pump should not sound like that at all. That's it. So that's the pump. That's all. We pumped about four gallons of fuel out of there. We turn it off as quickly as we can. Now, if I take my trusty wrench and I tap on this a couple times, give it a little tap, sometimes it comes right back on. Sometimes it doesn't. There it goes. So it turned back on and then it shut back off. I just changed this fuel filter earlier this afternoon and you saw the old fuel filter. Again, this is not the correct color. This was shiny and new like three weeks ago and there is i don't know if you can see that but there's the rust so it's not good there is a water issue i also replaced the cap over here on this fuel tank because there's a little metal piece in there and that thing was rusted up well put the new cap on it was shiny new and nice now it's rusted we've got some serious water in this fuel and i think it's a problem from the fuel station that we picked up our off-road diesel <clears throat> so we've got water in the fuel and what we have in this toolbox is hopefully a solution to our water problem. And that solution 
would be water block fuel water separator so we're going to take the filter off of here and we're going to put a fuel water separator in here to make sure that if we're getting water in our fuel we know it so we'll lay this guy in here where it doesn't get a lot of trash on it and we'll go ahead and we're going to start removing all this rigmarole right here so that we can install this guy before we install the fuel water separator we're going to take apart the entire pump system and see what's making that racket making that noise in there i got about three gallons pumped out before it just totally quit i need to be able to pump like 16 17 gallons i need to be able to just run the pump constantly until i run all of the fuel out of it so here we go first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the fuel filter and i just put this on hand tight we should be good to go i'm getting this guy off it may have a little bit of fuel it's not bad just a little bit we're going to take this hose off maybe <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion this is gonna last an extra day I'm gonna be out here doing this to, working on this tomorrow Ugh. come on buddy come on dude Ugh. looks like we're just gonna have to spin this whole fitting off of here man there's rust even where the fuel filter goes on here there's rust Round and round we go. I call that long life truck preservative too. <laughs> this truck is really, really rusty, so no diesel fuel is really gonna harm it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Set this guy to the side. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this cover off. Uh, this cover, I think, contains the guts of the pump that we're hearing squeal at us, I do believe. So, off comes that. A little bit of fuel leakage there. Okay, good to go. And there's a strainer right in here, and we'll just slide it straight out. There we go, good deal. There's a lot of trash in there, and this is the strainer critter right here this little strainer guy and you can see all the nastiness that's right in there let's get a close-up so that's what's coming out of the fuel pump that's in the bottom of the tank now this is the working mechanism inside this pump and i had no idea that it was plastic so slide this guy little plastic guy out plastic wheel there and this must be what turns with the pump Okay, I see. There's a little tab right here. You flip that tab up, and out comes that critter. Cool. Let's get you a close-up. So this is what's inside a diesel fuel pump on the back of your pickup truck. And it's just two little plastic wheels. And that is what is in the fuel tank. My brain tells me to energize this pump and see if it's making all that noise without these wheels spinning. This is our switch. We'll engage the switch and this little guy right here is going to spin. We'll know if our motor is bad if this thing just bogs down and quits. So here we go. All right. Running, struggling. Okay. So the motor runs, but it runs very weak. Before we pull the motor off the back, I'm gonna take this switch cover off and see if there's something I can see inside that switch. Guys, the reason we're doing this is because this pump is expensive. It's well over a couple hundred bucks. We're gonna pull that cover off. Should be sealed, and it is. There's a gasket right here sealed off nicely and inside here it's just a little toggle switch so the toggle switch actually comes out we'll unscrew that takes a little torx hold my hand under here to catch that guy woohoo good catch and out comes our switch so on the back here is a little relay nothing seems damaged in here it all looks shiny pretty and new yep bogging down still bogging 
I think it'll keep running, but it's bogging. Slide this switch back into place. We know it's not the switch. Guys, if you have any input, please let me know. Please tell me what you're thinking in the comments down there. Next thing I'm gonna do is take this guy off. This is a union, I do believe. There we go. Loosen that guy, hold him in place. Just loosen this. So here we go, out with the pickup tube. I would have definitely not thought that this was PVC or plastic. There we go. Okay. So this is what's inside. That's the pickup. It just slides down and touches the bottom of the tank. Might as well take it apart and learn a little bit about it, if, even if we are going to replace it. Time to do a motorectomy. At least if we don't fix it, we're still learning a little bit about how these pumps work. And I may be able to take this motor to a starter rebuild place and have them go through it. Okay, All sealed off and there's some rust issues right here. And this motor will not at all spin freely. It's done, it's toast. And it's explosion proof. So this whole setup is explosion proof. Let me, before I cut the wires, let me see if I can take these two nuts off without damaging the motor. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Ooh, that's a long one. That's a long one too. All right, let's see. Maybe it'll come apart. Maybe. Might take a little tappy tap tap. Man, I'd love to fix this instead of buying a new one. Let's give it a little slide tap here. There we go. I'll bet the armature and everything comes out. What's your guess? Post it before I do it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I'm wasting my time and I just need to spend the money and replace this. Ooh, stinks. Smells burn up. Yeah, this thing is very corroded inside. Come on, there we go. Okay. Oh, baby. All right, here's what we got. It's been full of water. Look at that. It's got just rust and flakes of crusty nastiness in there. It smells bad too. And it will not turn freely at all. So the motor is trashed. It's full of rust. And that's okay. I mean, we only paid a hundred bucks for the fuel tank with the pump. So that's okay. But it's not okay for my wallet. Yeah, it should be. Mm, there it comes. Come on, baby. Oh, that is a nasty, crusty thing. It's not held in. I don't think it's a magnet holding it in. I think it's just held in with crust. That's why we're not turning like we should. Come on, man. There it goes. There is a magnet. Okay, here it comes. Oh, see the dust cloud come out of there? Look at that. Nasty. Yep, there are two big old magnets in there, but it evidently it's usable. Service life is over. Something has burned up in here. It smells all burn up, and that's what the noise was we were hearing is all these little particles. Let's see if I can get you a good shot of it. All that crust, that's what's making all that noise, grinding. So the question is, do we give up or do we just take some brake cleaner, clean this thing back up, and put it back together? Oh, come on, baby. There we go. Yeah, that was easy. Yeah, 
there it is. It looks as if this had some sort of glue that held it in place at some point. That glue is done. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I like this kind of stuff. It's educational, it's fun, and whether it works to fix it or not, who knows, but it's worth a try to save 300 bucks. So these are the brushes right here and they're spring loaded and they're not that bad. I am totally inclined to take this guy down to the shop, clean it up really good, put it back together and see what it does. Maybe even take some diesel fuel and just, just wipe this off. Water, fuel, water, electronics, no good, no worky. It's the next day. We went over to Tractor Supply last night and we picked up a new kit. Holy cow, $419 for a new pump kit. I really hope we can fix this on our own today. So what we're gonna do is basically clean up everything. And this is a one inch size fuel water separator and I needed to pick up a couple different size nipples to go on to the pump so that I could get that water separator out just a little bit. Now our hose is a three quarter inch size so we'll have to step it down in the little kit from Great Plains comes with all the goodies that we need to step it down. Now I got different lengths of pipe nipple in order to get this job done. First thing we're gonna do here, I'm gonna design something to clean out inside that little motor casing. Let me show you. So here's the motor casing and I can hear trash shaking around in there. Oh, there's a little bushing I just almost lost too. Better hang on to that guy. So inside this casing is a bunch of rusty old crusty nastiness and I can't really get all the way down in there with my DeWalt drill and a little grinding wheel. So this is not going to work to clean the entire thing out and there's rust and crust way down deep inside there. So I had an idea. <laughs> I just so happen to have a roll of skateboard tape. So this is uh, tape, basically sandpaper tape. And I'm gonna take that sandpaper tape and tape it around an old socket. And then we're gonna take that old socket inside of that housing and we're gonna clean it out really good with that old socket. Should work great. Let's see if that does it. Yep, so we got a little gap, but that'll be just fine. I hope little ideas like this help you guys in your shop. If you have a little problem that you can't find a solution for, think outside the box a little bit. I promise there's a solution if you just look for it. There we go. And there's our sanding wheel. Pretty cool. So we've jumped up to a little bit bigger size wheel here. And we'll attach our socket and extension. We'll go back in. Oh yeah. Next step with the casing, we're gonna take some brake cleaner and we're gonna rinse this guy out really good. Perfect, check it out. Clean as a whistle in there, very nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is clean these magnets. There are two of these magnets right here and I'm just gonna take my wire wheel and get to scrubbing on them. You can see there's rust all balled up all over this thing. And the back of it had some sort of adhesive and we're gonna use some silicone caulking to stick this back to the inside of the casing. You'll see how it all goes together. Let me get the rotational portion of this motor for you. Here's the rotational portion. You can see it's just stained with rust, but some of these little metal plates in here are out of place. You see that guy right there? It's a little bit out of place. And some of them are really out of place. You can see like three or four of them right here are kind of out of whack. So this line should be straight and you can see it's not straight. Two or three of these little guys need to be straightened out. And it's just as simple as taking a screwdriver and going right up here and pushing it back into place. It's just that easy. Here's the rotational portion. We found this little washer that goes on the tip there. And here are the two magnets. And what I'm gonna do is take the magnet there and put it on. And take the other magnet right here and put it on. You can see the gap right there. There's a little bit of a gap. And then this 
will slide right down into the casing after I put a little dab of caulk here and a little dab of caulk there. We'll drop this guy down in there. There's our caulk. <laughs> I think I need to pull my rotor back out so that the magnets will actually stick. Okay, so we replaced the magnets. We cleaned everything off and we replaced the magnets in here and I put caulking in there. Wrong move, okay? So the caulking did not stick. It did not work correctly. And I had to pull them back out and I put some epoxy in there. And now these magnets, they ain't going nowhere. I did go on eBay and I found that you could buy just the motor assembly by itself. So if we put this back together, I'm not going to put an entire new kit on the top of this. In other words, I'm going to buy a new motor and put a new motor on it. The new motor is 127 bucks versus 319 bucks. So sometimes if time's on your side, you can save a little bit of money. Let's put this thing back together. All right, here's the rotor portion of the motor. And I also cleaned up these contacts right here. And I cleaned up the uh, brushes that go on there. And the brushes are integrated into this entire big unit right here so we're gonna flip it over and get busy this has been no easy task guys this has been a quite the chore all i'm doing is reassembling this in the exact same order that i disassembled it so we're hooked to the battery let's turn it on see if it's silent and awesome -hoo -hoo -hoo! yeah baby nice i think we got it I went on and I put some new sealant on this fitting right here. And I also wrapped everything really good with some fuel tolerant Teflon tape. This stuff right here is called Mega Tape. You got to use a fuel tolerant type Teflon tape if you're going to be working with fuel. And we also have a fuel water separator that we're going to put in here to save us a lot of heartache in the future. And we extended this nipple out just a little bit. So we customized this a little bit for our truck. I basically bought this thing for a hundred bucks, slapped it on the truck, hooked power to it. It ran, it was good to go, but it was making funny noises. Now I know what the funny noises are. It's all cleaned up inside. We'll seal it off really good with silicone around every single joint that we possibly can. And that way, hopefully we don't run into this problem again and we don't end up costing ourselves a bunch of money. I'm super happy I get to take that $319 part back to Tractor Supply. Never even opened the box. Rad. Let's slap it back together and see if she pumps. Whenever you're putting Teflon tape on, you always want to wrap it in the same direction that you'll tighten it so that as you tighten, it doesn't unravel around the fitting. Down the hatch. Woo. There we go. Man, it's nice when stuff works out like it's supposed to. Everything looks pretty awesome. We'll snug it up tight and fire it up and see if we start pumping fuel. I'm curious to see what fills this little container first, whether it's just nasty grossness or water i think it's awesome to have this view of what's really going on inside the fuel tank it's going to help me out a whole lot here on the farm first fire up after motor rebuild let's hear it rock star awesome that motor sounds great look at that Man, it filled that canister up a lot quicker than I thought it was. It was just instantly filled it up. I don't see any trash in there either. Motor is running like a top, man. Turn her off. Hang up our hose. Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now you know how to rebuild a little motor like that, clean it up, put it back together, and it worked. We saved a lot of money today. Hopefully this helps you if you have fuel troubles on your farm, or if you have a fuel tank similar to this and you're having some water troubles, hopefully this helps you with solving your water troubles. Now we did put in some power service uh, additive in this fuel tank to keep that fuel from developing the algae and the power service is supposed to destroy the algae, eat it up and make it to where it'll pass through any diesel engine, I hope. So we've got a filter. We can watch this a little bit closer now and I'm super duper happy. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today, guys. I had a great time working on the old pump, got her squared away, and now we're ready to work. All right, Woo! Yeah, Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony
Tony Reed.